Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Know How is brought to you by Squarespace, the all in one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free two week trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code Know How. And by iFixit. You can fix it, and iFixit makes it easy with free step by step repair guides, high quality replacement parts, and all the tools you'll ever need. For 10% off your purchase of $50 or more, go to ifixit.com slash twit and enter the code KNOWHOW at checkout. On this episode of Know How, Titanfall Tips, Windows 8.1, and freaking lasers! Way to break the camera. <laughs> it's the diffuser. It won't bust it. I tested. <laughs> Wait, so... <laughs> don't, no, don't do that. No, no, no. Welcome to Know How. It's the Twitch show where we build, bend, break, and upgrade. I'm Father Robert Ballasare. And I'm Brian Burnett. For the next uh, 30 minutes or so, we're going to show you some of the projects that we've been toying around with to see maybe if it gives you the knowledge to geek out in your own geek world. That's right. And today we have an article to talk about, which I'm pretty excited about. Yeah, you know, I, I, I just realized we're both kind of motorheads for different reasons. You're really big into motorcycles. You, right. love, you love the two wheels. You like, you like that freedom. I like the freedom, yeah. The wind in your hair, the, yeah. the straight out speed. Yeah, I can't do that because I'm not so aerodynamic. But what I do like is I love supercars. Yes. And, well, and even though we can't afford them, we, can, love we can't them. afford them. Yeah. But if Audi wanted to send us one, a test one, we, we could totally do we'll that. We'll test anything. Yeah. <laughs> but, but specifically, we're talking about a, a specific part of one of the new Audi R8 supercars. Now, you may remember back in the A8, if you've paid attention to automotive oh, technology, yes. Audi introduced the idea of smart lights. Brian, do you know what smart lights are? Uh, smart lights. Well, this is technology of high-intensity LED lights. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, 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 by the way, can be very annoying. Can be annoying, right? Because we've all had that experience of like cresting the hill or, or being in one of those two lanes, and, and you get blinded yeah. coming over. Yeah. And it's normally because someone has retrofitted their super cool street racer right, with some yeah. high-intensity lights. That 1998 Ford Explorer <laughs> looks awesome with LED lights. Dude, on it. your '95 Civic is kicking with with LED <laughs> highlights. <laughs> Oh, yeah, lay off those one, Hondas. Right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, but yeah, so they, they can be kind of annoying. And what Audi did was they combined a couple of technologies, uh, GPS, car sensing, pedestrian sensing uh, technologies inside the, the A8 in order to make sure that any time you were, say, cresting a hill mm -hmm. or approaching an oncoming car, it would turn the LEDs down so you don't blind the oncoming driver or pedestrian. Well, that's very thoughtful of them, actually. Right. I like that a lot. It's, it's thoughtful tech, and it's something that they've integrated into all of their high-end luxury cars. Yeah, I'm sure it'll trickle down sooner or later to some of the other ones, hopefully. Fingers crossed? No? If not, then can we just test the R8? <laughs> Actually, yes. It doesn't so, have to be at nighttime either. Now, the <laughs> R8, you know, everyone's seen the Audi R8. It, it is a beautiful car in yes. its own right. But they, they created a limited edition of R8, sort of their supercars. Mm -hmm. And now they've decided to up their headlight game with... Uh, Freaking lasers. lasers. Now, you can't see the beam, unfortunately, but you might, I could do this. This actually has a diffuser so that it, it shows up as a big, bright light. This is very close to the technology that Audi is going to be integrating into that limited edition of, uh, of R8 supercars. Wait a minute. So LEDs blind people, but lasers are good, not? This, th okay, that's exactly the, the, uh, uh, the response I had the first time I read the article. Yeah. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> well, we've just substituted something that was bad with something that is <laughs> really blind you. It's like, yeah. oh, so now it doesn't just temporarily blind me. Now yeah. it actually burns out my corneas. That's <laughs> so how does it work? Then? Well done. All right, so this is what Audi has decided to do. They've decided to create a standard LED headlamp. headlamp. So it's got the LED array, mm -hmm. right, which gives decent brightness. Now you combine that with the smart light monitor, right, so it makes sure that it's not blinding people. Nope. But they're also putting an array of four high-intensity blue light laser uh, elements inside <laughs> each headlight. And what it will do is it actually shines that light 
at a phosphorescent converter, which will convert the blue laser light into 5,500 Kelvin white light, which is very, very close to daylight bounce. That's, wow. the, that's the light you want. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, the cool thing about that is it doesn't engage until the car hits 38 miles per hour. Right, because then it can it projects it a little bit further ahead. Exactly. So what they want to do is they want to create something like a laser spot. So you've uh, it, it actually, yeah, exactly. Uh, um, Alex has got that up there. Mm. If you look at this, that shows you where Whoa. typical LED lights go. Yeah. Then it shows you where the LED high beams would go. Then it shows you where the quote unquote laser spot's going to go, <laughs> which is you know it, it's two to four times further than what you can see. So you yeah, only wow. need it when you're traveling at speed. Yeah, so you'll definitely see that deer before you hit it. Exactly, exactly. And because it's projecting so far ahead of you, it's combining that daylight balanced light, which is, the, which is what our eyes are trained to see, mm -hmm. with the light from the, uh, the LED, the high intensity LED. So it creates that, that laser spot further <laughs> out, which, yeah. uh, which is good. Yeah, no, uh, well, safety first, right? Safety first. But I, I was thinking, as long as we're talking about this, we should probably talk about the technology that actually lets this work. Right. So, go. What, yeah. What, how does it work then? Well, you know, we've all played with these things, right? Oh, by the way, don't, oh. don't shine that anyone's eyes. That right. Or into the cameras. That will, like I've seen someone do just a couple seconds it. ago. Yeah, that's no, that's all right. Cool. Yeah, I'm not okay. gonna do it. All right, I don't right. want the engineers to yell at me. Don't do it, Brian. <sighs> Sorry. Do I would have totally done it, do but you Alex says no. Alex. Uh, yes. Okay. Oh. All right. So when we're talking about lasers, uh, we're talking about. It's actually, it stands for something. It's uh, light amplification through the stimulated emission of radiation. That's what laser stands for. Oh, I thought it was just a cool name. <laughs> right, right. All right. Well, uh, so the way that a, a laser functions is, uh, I think the easiest way is to compare it to what a regular light would function. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the way. So when we're talking about like an incandescent light, what we're talking about is a coil of wire that gets heated by an electrical charge that passes through it, right? Right. And then it releases light in all directions and all right. different spectrums, right? But this is, a laser is something super focused, It's right? super focused and it's super limited in the spectrum of light that it emits. Now, now here's, let's, let's get into physics for just a little bit. Oh, boy. Yeah, well, let's talk about atoms. Specifically, atoms have electrons that circle their nucleus, right? Okay. Now, those electrons will always seek out the lowest possible orbit, the lowest empty orbit. That's like the stable orbit. Hmm, all right. They want to be at that sort of that almost ground state, that, that stable state. Yeah. Now, what happens is if you pass an electrical charge through an atom, either by heating it up or, or actually passing electricity through it, or by, uh, say, striking it with light, it excites the electron and it moves to a higher orbit. Okay, okay? So that's like a that, higher frequency? Well, well it, it just means that there's more, there's more energy. Okay. inside that orbit. Hmm. The problem is that electron at that higher orbit will want to go back down to that lower orbit. So you have to keep it energized? You, well, if you want to keep it at this higher state, you have to keep it energized. But what's actually going to happen is it will drop back down, and in dropping back down, it will emit a photon. Oh. Okay, and now that photon, in, in, uh, in typical, say, an incandescent light, is called unstimulated radia uh, radiation. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, which means it's, it's kind of a hodgepodge of what you're going to get. You can get a bunch of different spectrums, a, a bunch of different light colors. Okay, so that's why there's the green lasers and like well, red lasers. Well, yes, but see, th that operates under a different principle. So that unstimulated release of energy just gives us anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I want to do a laser, what I can do is I can actually control the decay of that orbit. Mm -hmm. I apply an electromagnetic field around that atom. And now when the excited electron wants to go back down to the ground state, it has to jump specifically to a frequency that emits a specific photon at a specific uh, wavelength, which gives me red, green, or blue. Okay. Have I blown the... A little bit. But when I, okay, so Audi is using this to manipulate it to make it look like daylight. Exactly, exactly. So because they can control that laser, yeah. and because lasers because they are stimulated emissions. I can control which direction they're going in and I can control what wavelength they run at. Hmm. Means that I can have a, a beam, a very tight cone of light rather than light right. everywhere, right? Now, could you explain to me why is it green lasers are, yeah. seem to be more powerful than the red ones? It, that it all depends on the type of material that you use and the type of, of field that you're using to create that stimulated emission of radiation. Mm. So whatever is my resonant frequency, that's the, the wavelength of photon that's going to get thrown off. So I use different materials for blue, for green, for red. Cool. Yeah. Which one's going to burn your eyes out first? Blue. Though? Yeah, blue. blue. Wait, oh, blue. isn't that what... Really? 
Isn't that what Audi's using? But yes, yes, but see, blue is also, it's, it's one of the highest energy wavelengths, so it, you can get further. Now, uh, yeah, remember, the, the reason sorry. why they're doing this is because they're combining it with that smart light technology. <laughs> All right, but what, it's like, uh, maybe it's pedestrian, maybe it's not. Uh, let's just not turn off the lights and then they're yeah. blinded. I'm yeah. actually looking forward to the day where all of our lights are lasers. <laughs> yeah? And then we have to wear some sort of eye protection? Well, you know, uh, actually, anytime you're using this, this is a high power laser from, from yeah, Wicked Laser. Yeah, you should probably have glasses on. You, Do you, you have really a should pair? have. Uh, no. No, you just have the one pair. Yeah, and, and you know, Great. actually, this, uh, this laser is bright enough where if I were to hold it on dark material for. Exactly. <laughs> oh my god. That's very powerful. That's what happened. Thanks. Yeah. I'm really glad you brought one pair of those super cool looking And and actually Burke wants what to the? Burke wants to show off the uh <laughs> see oh oh you can actually see that. I guess Wait. we got a fog More smoke, Burke. More smoke. You can see puff, it in the studio. Puff like I don't a know smoke if you can see. Oh, there, oh, there we go. Oh, and ladies like, and gentlemen, that's the right the next yeah. generation. <laughs> <laughs> of headlight technology. You can't see it, but Burke is off camera blowing smoke for us. <laughs> right before He's the a... show started, Brian's like, do we have a fog machine? And Burke's yes, like, we do. It's Burke. Yeah, Idea. the human smoke machine. <laughs> He's He's lighting up cigarettes <laughs> left and right over here. Uh, now, I should mention that uh, right now, uh, there is an audience, a live audience That's of new. thousands in the brick house. I, I didn't think we could fit all of them in and, here. And uh, yeah, they should all say. <laughs> yeah. Now, you you guys are here for for Maker Fair, right? Yes, I am. Nice. Okay. Well, we're well, gonna be welcome. There. Welcome to the Twit Brick House. I hope that and you. Th this is this is actually just the mosh pit. The thousands are in the back. Yeah, they're just slightly off camera. Yeah. yeah. These these are the ones who couldn't be trusted with everyone else. <laughs> these are the special VIPs. Spe speaking of VIP, hey yeah. Brian. Mm -hmm. Have you ever uh, tried to have VIP access to, say, a website? I have. Have you ever tried to create a website for a VIP? I've tried. Have you I've ever succeeded. tried to create a website for a v VIP with special VIP access using just some of the off-the-shelf tools? No. Yeah, it's because it's a pain in the ass. It is. It really yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. It I mean, takes too much time. It takes too much time. It takes too much effort. And I, I think this is the worst thing for me. Whenever I'm trying to create a nice site, a nice mm -hmm. clean site, and especially if I'm trying to create it for people who maybe don't have all the technical expertise. Well, I always have a great image in my mind of what I'd like to do. Uh, but but then, no, the reality of it is never not, this, what I want. No, yeah. It's not great. <laughs> yeah. and, and, you know, what we really want is we want some sort of package that we could purchase that combines all the things we need for a, a dynamic website in one place. Does such a thing exist, Padre? Is it, it possible? It is. It's called Squarespace. <gasps> now, right now, people around the world are using Squarespace because it is your one-stop shop for a professionally designed website. It, it combines all the things that you need, from hosting to domain registration to the back end, two wonderful templates that let you create a professional-looking website without even trying. Now, if you've ever used a Squarespace page, you know, like I have, that it is incredibly easy to get started. You literally click the Get Started button, and you choose your template, and you start inputting your content. This is a great way to share your weekend project blog or provide the ability to jumpstart a side startup project with a professional-looking site and the ability to quickly and easily take orders and sell creations. Now, Squarespace isn't just going to sit back on their laurels and say, yeah, we created something nice. They're actually always improving their service, and that's one of the things that we really like about them. They are always offering new features, new designs, and even better support. And yes, for DIYers, there are a set of tools to create your own website without code from those design tools like the Layout Engine and the Logo Creator, a platform for customization, especially if you know enough code to get under the hood since the development platform is also super robust. Now, Squarespace has 25 beautiful templates for you to start with, but you can tinker with them so your site doesn't have to look like any other site in existence. They also recently added the, that logo creator, which is a basic tool for individuals and small businesses with limited resources to create a simple identity for themselves online. It's also easy to use. Squarespace has live chat and email support 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but really, you're not going to need them because it's intuitive. If you've ever put together a document, if you've ever put together a presentation, well, you, you know how Squarespace works. Squarespace also offers e-commerce available for all subscription plan levels, which means you get the ability to accept donations or payments. It's great for nonprofits, cash wedding registries, and school fund drives. 
It's also inexpensive, which doesn't seem to go with all the features that I've been naming off. It starts at just $8 a month and includes a free domain name if you sign up for a year. Well, Squarespace is also mobile ready. Brian, have you ever gone to a website where it, you could tell that it was designed for a, a, like a laptop or a desktop and everything's kind of squished right. or it's not in the right space? Or you, yeah, so you pull it up on your phone and you're like, scroll, 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 zoom, 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 yeah, try and look at the text. It's a pain and it's more than just a pain for the user. There's always that thought in your back of your mind that uh, these people aren't ready for prime time. You right. know, if, if they don't realize that I'm going to check this thing on my phone, then why would I want to deal with them? Well, I just want to read it quickly, and the font is like 10 point on my phone. So right. it's like, right. okay, either I hold it up like this, or I try and zoom in, and then I have to scroll along the page to read it. Well, if you're using Squarespace, you don't get that. What they give you are tools to dynamically resize your page, to move the content around, so that you don't have to know how to code it, it just automatically happens. Desktop, laptop, tablet, or phone, Squarespace looks right for the people who are visiting. Now, even their code is beautiful. I'm a coder, and I always look behind the scenes to see if maybe they've created a horrible WYSIWYG editor. But Squarespace code looks beautiful on the inside as much as it does on the outside. Just like you, Padre. Just like I am. <laughs> I am so beautiful in every single way. <laughs> Sorry, keep going. No. Now, as I mentioned before, Squarespace also includes hosting, which means it's a one-stop shop. You're not going to have to buy yeah. your back end from one place and your domain registry from another. Really, you, you pay your subscription and you go. So here's what we want you to do. We want you to try Squarespace. Start a free two-week trial with no credit card and start building your website today. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code KNOWHOW to get 10% off and to show your support for KNOWHOW. We thank Squarespace for their support of know-how, a better web awaits. And it starts with your new Squarespace website. All right. Boom. Yeah. How about that? Nailed it. Now, a few weeks back, we promised the folks that uh, we would give them Windows 8.1 <laughs> tips. We teased them we for teased about them three weeks, right? About three weeks. And unfortunately, uh, our TD decided that we had run out of... Yeah. Uh, actually, let's ask this. Brian, uh, Alex? Do, Do we, we have, have time enough time? I, I, I think we can squeeze well, it. In. We, you know what? We could save the, the audience some time. I looked at your notes and it says first tip uninstall Windows 8. Was that it? No. No, that wasn't it. Okay, you actually have tips. Sorry. God, I hate Mac people. <laughs> <laughs> Just run it. If you're an old fashioned PC person, you're probably used to hitting print screen or shift print screen to get a full screen shot of whatever was on your desktop. Nowadays, you could do that by bringing up the snipping tool, but there's actually a shortcut that could save you a little time. When you want to make a screenshot, simply press the Windows key and print screen. A screenshot will automatically be saved to your pictures folder. The second tip is for those of you who hate the modern UI pictures viewer as much as I do. If you've ever clicked on an image and been annoyed when you were brought to the new and improved Windows Pictures Library and Photo Viewer, then dump modern with the following steps. First, right-click on an image, then select Open With. Now select Choose Default Program, and select Windows Photo Viewer. Now be clear, with this method, you're going to have to choose each and every type of image file, PNG, GIF, JPEG, in order to make that the default choice. Now if you feel like putting a bit more effort into it, you can actually change the default program for all images at the same time. First, go into Settings. Then select Control Panel, select Default Programs, now set your default programs, then scroll to Windows Photo Viewer. Select Set This Program as Default, and now click OK. Now anytime you click any image, you should be modern UI free. Those first two tips are time saving and preference tips. But if you actually want to get back some of the functionality in Windows 8.1 that seems to have been stripped away from Windows 7, then follow the following tip in order to get your desktop apps. The first thing you want to do is go ahead and right-click on the desktop, any empty space. Now select New and add Shortcut. Now you want to enter the command Explore Shell colon Apps folder, one word. Now go ahead and name it All Apps. You've just created a folder on your desktop that contains all your programs, not just the ones that Windows 8.1 has deemed are suitable for the desktop. Now what about power? 
if you don't have a touchscreen, Windows 8.1 is a little picky on how you shut it down. You have to hover your cursor over the top right corner of the screen, click Settings, click Power, and select your power option. Well, if you want a down and dirty shortcut to shut down your Windows 8 computer, follow the following tip. First, go to the desktop, right-click on any empty area of the desktop, and create a new shortcut. Now type in the following command, shutdown period exe space period s space period t space zero zero. Now you want to name your command shutdown and pin it to the taskbar. Now clicking that shortcut will bypass all the Windows 8.1 goodness and instantly pull the plug on your PC. Follow these tips and you're well on your way to taking back control of your Windows 8.1 desktop. I'm Father Robert Ballas here and that's a quick tip. Now, over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be bringing you more Windows 8.1 tips. I know a lot of people, including myself, have been a little upset with, uh, you know, with Windows. They don't really like what they've been uh, seeing. They don't like the fact that Microsoft has changed so many of the things that they've gotten used to with Windows XP and Windows 7. But uh, I'm going to show you some of the ways that you can take your power back. Uh, uh, Brian? Mm -hmm. What? Um, oh, so, uh, sorry. What, I was busy working on what, something what, what, during what that video. There? What? Down there, Brian? Uh, I'm fixing something. I, that doesn't look like fixing. All right. Well, I didn't fix it very well, but I took it apart great. Putting it back together is something <sighs> else. Well, you know, even if you can't get it together, what I do like is that you're using the iFixit toolkit and the magnetic pad. Well, this took me no time at all to take it apart. Yeah, yeah. Now, we at the show here at Know How, we, we love these toolkits. iFixit really knows what people need in order to be makers. And they, you know, they've created that technology. Uh, they've built it into their, their toolkit. They've built it into their pad, which, by the way, I really like this. This fact yes. that this is a dry erase pad and it stores your screws so you can sort of put them in the right quadrants and keep them all organized. Well, say if you were to take apart your GoPro, you might you know, organize your screws a little bit better than me and in the order that you took yeah. them out, but as I am a no. madman. My favorite part is whenever I've been creating, uh, you know, little projects is when I accidentally <gasps> tip the table and all the screws fall, <laughs> scroll up. Well, that's why this is magnetic, so that when you have your screws on the pad and when you've labeled them, that. you never have to worry about them uh, being freed. You can draw on it too with a dry eraser. Yeah. I don't have one. Yeah. Now, <laughs> we've been using these tools forever, but there are people out there who don't know what iFixit is. Now, iFixit.com is the free online repair manual for everything. They have more than 10,000 repair guides from everything from electronics like your smartphone, tablet, and game console to your home appliances, clothing, and yeah, even your bike. They also have foolproof instructions to fix, fix all your stuff. If you've shattered your iPhone screen, if you've disassembled your GoPro, if you need to repair the red ring of death on your Xbox or swap the battery in your Galaxy S3, iFixit has got you covered with parts, tools, and repair guides. Now today we are introducing these two new iFixit tools, the Protec Screwdriver Kit and the Magnetic Project Mat. Now this Protec Screwdriver Kit has one screwdriver, uh, well, for everything really. It's the, it's the kit that rules them all. There are 15 screwdrivers specifically chosen by the iFixit teardown team. These drivers can handle more than 90% of all electronics repairs. Now remember that this was chosen by the people who do repairs, they do teardowns for a living. So when they went through a kit and they decided what 15 drivers you should have, they said, well, yeah, these are the ones we use most often. Now these are designed for heavy use and for, uh, well, for delicate jobs. They're very precise. They have a black oxide tip for increasing grip, durability, and corrosion resistance, as well as a fixed blade swivel top design for added precision. Now this custom tool roll makes this a handy portable toolkit for amateurs and professional fixers alike. It comes with a lifetime warranty, which means anything breaks, they're going to replace it for you, and it's only $59.95. Now this magnetic project mat, this is something that I've really been enamored by and you've been using quite a bit. This is an original iFixit invention. It organizes all your parts while you work on repair, and yeah, that magnetic surface holds all those tiny screws, springs in place. The dry erase surface lets you take notes to prevent mistakes when you're reassembling it, something that Brian probably... Yeah, should've, I should have tried that yeah, out. Should have mm. probably, yeah. But uh, if you're using this, you'll never lose a screw again. Mm. It's a great companion for any iFixit toolkit, and it's only $19.95. Now, here's what we want you to do. We want you to try iFixit. We want you to see if it's going to be as good for you as it is for us. With iFixit, you can fix it yourself. Visit iFixit.com twit for more than 10,000 free step-by-step -step guides. 
iFixit also sells every part and tool that you'll need. Enter the code KNOWHOW at checkout, and you'll save $10 off any purchase of $50 or more. That's iFixit.com slash twit. And we thank iFixit for their support of KNOWHOW. Are you, uh, you done breaking that? Uh, yeah, I think I've taken it apart as much as I can. Because, so, uh, let's say the end of that project. Because, you know, if you're done destroying my GoPro, I'm thinking maybe uh, uh, you could show the good folks at home some Titanfall. That's right, yeah. So, we have that gaming PC for a while, and to stress test it, I've been playing Titanfall on it. We introduced that uh, a few episodes back, and maybe if you've been playing it and getting frustrated like Burke, <clears throat> uh, you could watch a few of these tips, and it'll help you out. Ah, uh, Titanfall, <laughs> the game where you get to control a mech and blow stuff up. What's not to like? Well, getting pwned, for one thing. It's not always fun, but maybe it's not your skills that need to be brought up to snuff, but your Titan loadout. So what I've found is this loadout is particularly good for taking out other Titans. We're going to start with the Atlas chassis. This is the most balanced of the three available titans, and it has an equal mix of speed and armor. Your main weapon for obliterating mechs should be the 40mm cannon. The cons of this weapon are it is a little slow between firing, and it doesn't have a lot of splash damage, but when you do hit something, it packs a wallop. If you've leveled up enough, uh, I would re also recommend using the extended mag so that you're uh, not left without ammo when in a dire situation. The next loadout option you'll want to use is Electric Smoke. It's not so great for taking down Titans, but it is good for defending yourself against hijackers. You could also take a lesson from nature's squishy underwater menace, the octopus, and use it to ink away from your enemies. To use the smoke effectively, you should hold still, deploy, and wait for the pilots either fall off like a dead flea, or if they're smart, jump off and keep your eyes peeled and skate around in hopes of running them over. As for ordnance, I prefer the slaved warheads. What these allow you to do is target a titan, lock on, and if you hit them with a full salvo, it'll take down their shields, allowing you to mop them up with a 40mm. Now the kit is really up to personal preference, but I like to make a dramatic exit. So I have opted for the nuclear ejection. Not only does this shoot you way up into the air, you go in giving you a clear view of the battle below, it makes a powerful explosion obliterating anything nearby. It's definitely satisfying to know that at least if you're going to go down, you're probably going to take someone with you. Finally, I like to use the survivor pack. This gives you extra time to exact your revenge before your titan goes critical. But a word of warning, a Doom Titan is vulnerable to getting punched and having you ripped out viciously from the cockpit. Not fun. If you're able to use this loadout in conjunction with some of the other tips, you'll be destroying Titans left and right. And one last thing, if you truly want to decimate your foes, drop satchels near the evac and dash their hopes right before their very eyes by, well, blowing them up. So this has been a quick Titanfall tip, hopefully that helps you out in the battlefield and uh, maybe more to come. Uh, Brian, thank you so very much for those Titanfall tips. Now, mm -hmm. uh, I understand you're actually really good. I've watched you play a lot, and I'm horrible. And well, yeah, practice, 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 Padre. Yeah. If you uh, put as many hours into it as I have, Didn't. which I regrettably can't get back. <laughs> now, we did have someone in the chat room while that, uh, that little tidbit was playing who was saying, well, if you can't run Crisis, I don't care. But, and, yeah, oh, Crisis yeah. has sort of been the defining thing about gaming machines Duh. for the last decade. It's an inside joke. Well, you know, supercomputer still can't run Crisis. This is the machine that we've been using. This is an Acer Predator G3. Uh, decent machine, very good gaming machine, low you know, budget type, type box. Right. But we've been playing all of our video games on this. In fact, this is running Crisis right now. So if on anyone- everything ultra. All right, and we're even running it in a window which is gonna slow down the performance. And it's been fantastic. You know, this is all the settings pumped up. This is good <laughs> to go. Now, something that you noticed about Crisis and Titanfall is, even though the, the video card and the CPU in this is plenty fast, we still do get slowdowns, right? Uh, we do get some slowdowns, but I think that was from running Shadow Play in the background we were recording at the same time. Right, right. And not only that, the, one of the biggest problems of this box is that it doesn't have an SSD. Right. That was one of the things I pointed out in my review of this and Before You Buy, which is, it's a great box, but it's only got eight gigabytes of memory, and it has a rotating one terabyte hard drive, which is not really, right. I mean, it really I'm, slows down your loads. I mean, it you, boots pretty quick and stuff, but 
I think we can make it faster. You, yeah. So what we're going to do, we want to tease something. We had our friends over at Kingston send us just a little care package. <laughs> so we've got their fastest ever, their HyperX SSD. We're going to drop this into the box. We're also going to drop 32 gigabytes of their DDR3 uh, SDRAM into the box just to show you what kind of performance gains you're going to get from it. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because there have been people in the audience who have reached out to us and said something along the effects of, I want to upgrade on my computer. What should I I upgrade and there's always a battle royale of well should you replace the processor should you get a better video card mm -hmm. I've always said it's SSD and memory that is the thing you're gonna notice yeah instantly it's the biggest yeah. impact for the least amount of money so what we're gonna do is we're gonna upgrade each one of these individually after benchmarking this PC mm -hmm. and show you what each one of these can give you in performance gains and then show you together what they give you in aggregate and as far as RAM goes I mean, I don't know if you can see this in the overhead shot, Alex, but uh, the more the more badass looking the <laughs> the heatsink, the better the RAM is. Well, far yeah, as I go. That, that's actually a scientific fact. If, yeah. the, if the RAM looks badass, it the says bytes are scared. Beast on it. They want to. They want to. <laughs> <laughs> they go faster that way. It's like. Well, no, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to testing that yeah. out. But look forward to that in a future episode of Know How. Uh, until then, I think, well, we've given you a lot of information. You're probably going to want to look at our show notes. Brian, where can they find our show notes? Uh, you can find our show notes at twit.tv slash kh, and that's where all our episodes live, past, present, and not the future, but soon to be. We're working on that. Yeah, <laughs> we're making a machine for that. Uh, and yeah, that's where our show notes live. So if we go over anything that you wanted to look into more detail, or maybe there are some steps that you missed, uh, Padre does a great job with his show notes. But uh, I don't know. We'll see how, we'll see how they come out today. <laughs> also, we should probably remind you that next week is a feedback episode. Remember, we do that once a month where we go through our G Plus page. Yes. And we start pulling in your projects, your questions, your, your queries, and we explain them on the show. So be sure to jump into our Google Plus page to, uh, to, to play around. Now, I, I'm not sure why it still only shows me. We, we should have a hippo <laughs> in there at some point. But, uh, we uh, haven't had the budget for it yet, but uh, I'm sure we'll come up with something. But where do they find our, our G Plus page? Uh, I think it's a G Plus .to slash twitkh. I think that is it. The, yeah. the thing was is that it didn't work for a little while, so it kind of threw me off. But if you're yeah. on Google Plus and you just search for know-how, I'm sure Padre's we're, face will pop up. There. Yeah. Scarily enough. <laughs> Definitely pop up. You can also email us at uh, knowhow at twit.tv. We will probably disregard that. So instead, try to find us on our Twitter accounts. You could find me at twitter.com slash PadreSJ. That's at PadreSJ. And I am at cranky underscore hippo. Yeah. Uh, until next time, now that you know, go to the G Plus page. Oh, there we go. Now that you know, go do it. <laughs> uh.